Very frequently, I'm asked to recommend a ground cover for, for someone to use in their landscape that can be put in an area that for some reason is a, is a problem or a hard to care for area. It may be an area like under a large shade tree such as we have here, where because of the shade and because of the competition of the roots of this very large tree, grass will not grow and we want something that will cover that. Or it may be in an area that's simply hard to mow, uh, uh, an area where it just, for some other reason it just may be difficult to maintain and so a ground cover uh, could be the ideal solution for that. However, we need to know that ground covers are not maintenance free and we do have to continue to work on them but we want as little maintenance as possible. So we're really not here today to talk about ground covers. Really I'm here today to talk about and give you some tips on how to control some of those undesirable plants that are going to come up in ground covers so that you can deal with them before they get to be a major problem. Here we have English Ivy which is a very good ground cover. It's, uh, it's very uh, rapid growing, it's uh, very inexpensive, it's accessible at most all garden centers and, and uh, stores that sell plants of, of any type, uh, where it's the big box store or just the local nursery and garden center, and so it is a good choice for you. However, I've got this particular ground cover here close to the entrance of my house, where my mailbox is, where my driveway is, and I come by here every day. And so I can maybe two or three times a day. And so if I see something that needs to be tended in this ground cover, I can easily care for it because it's, it's there and, and in front of me at all time. And the major problem I have with this ground cover and you will have with any ground cover such as this are those undesirable plants like little tree seedlings and weeds and things like that that come up uh, in, in that need to be cared for and tended to. And so in this particular area, because I see it every day, I have, uh, a good opportunity to take care of those. Now this is an oak tree, a big Schumard oak. I've got other oak trees in the area. I've got walnut and pecan trees in the neighborhood. So I have a kajillion little oak and walnut and pecan seedlings that come up. And if I did not take care of those very quickly, I would really have a forest here. But every time I can see a, a little tree of some type come up, like this little either oak or a walnut tree, if it's small and, it's, and, and I catch it in time, I can just gently reach down and pull it out of the ground and get rid of it that way and throw it to the side and I don't have to deal with it. And also with these vining and creeping ground covers we have to be sure to be on the lookout for another plant that looks very very similar to it that can really become aggressive and in that case it's the Virginia creeper. The Virginia creeper looks a lot like the ivy and again you can get it while it's small but being sure that you take care of, 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 of the entire vine at the same time and again, if you get those while they're small, you can just simply pull those out by the roots and there you've got this cleaned up again very easily. With this plant, though, if you don't do it because of its aggressiveness, it will completely take over and really mingle in and really ruin the looks of your pure stand of your English ivy. But in the back, where I don't go very often, I've got another ground cover where some real problems can occur. And there is another solution that I wanted to t uh, point out to you that you can use to control those undesirable plants in that ground cover if they get ahead of you. In this area, which is in uh, an area in my backyard where I don't frequent nearly as often, and also because there's some ground cover here that's very, very aggressive, I really don't get out here and tend to this ground cover like I did the English ivy. This actually is Vinca Major, actually a really nice ground cover, very aggressive, very fast growing, but it crept over from my neighbors and I've just decided just to leave it and let it be uh, the ground cover in this particular shrub bed. But back here I have a lot of, of weed trees and undesirable trees that where seeds have been dropped by the birds that tend to come up. And here we've got an old mulberry tree, for example, that I certainly don't want. Uh, in my ground cover. So the way that I take care of this is when I see them is I go down as close to the ground as possible and just clip those off. Then I've got Roundup which is pure undiluted Roundup in a little container. I have it marked so I'll know what it is. That I've taken a jar, drilled a hole in the top of the, of the lid and put a paintbrush down in there little sponge paint brush, secured it with some putty and I can just come in and paint those little stumps or those little twig areas that I've cut off with the Roundup and that keeps it from regrowing. 
that actually is a recommendation on the Roundup container label. So it is approved for doing this. You can also, of course, just do a spray of Roundup, a regular spray of Roundup, but I don't want to, uh, to dilute a whole sprayer just to, to control a few little uh, shrubs or a few little weed trees in my ground covers. On down here, we have one that is really difficult to control, and this is a privet. Uh, oftentimes we may have the tendency when we see a plant coming up like this, like a privet or a mulberry or an elm or whatever it is coming up in our ground covers or in our shrub beds or even in our flower beds, to just go in and clip, clip those off and not do anything. And when we do that, we see that they'll come back and they'll be malted trunks such as this and they'll grow even more quickly and more aggressively. So on this one, I'm going to have to go in now and do that again where it's all been cut off. This probably would be better if I had my loppers rather than this. I could go down even next to the ground itself and get it off. The lower you go, the better. But since I don't have my loppers with me, I'll just give it a good trimming and a good haircut. Come in again and just paint all of that very, very good with my Roundup and keep that from sprouting back out that way. So what I like to do is just occasionally check my ground covers, check my shrub beds, check my perennial beds. And as I see these weed trees or these problem plants begin to develop, the quicker you get a hold of them, the better it is. There we'll have a nice pure stand of your ground cover and plants that you want in there and not the plants that the birds want to plant in there for you. Now another really undesirable plant that you may find in the landscape, particularly if you're in a wooded area or if you're close to a, a place that is wooded, then you're going to more than likely this year run into some poison ivy. And that's what I want to talk a little bit about now. And notice I'm putting on a long sleeve shirt because when you deal with poison ivy, you want to have as much protection as possible because just a touch of that, if you're allergic to it, will can cause you some real problems. Fortunately, I have never been allergic to poison ivy, but I really respect the plant. My doctor told me one time that just because I do not have an allergy to it now, it doesn't mean that the next time it touches me, I could, and it would really blow up on me. And so I want to be really sure that I protect myself from this. Now the poison ivy is a plant that is often confused with other plants, or I should say other plants many times are confused with the poison ivy, particularly Virginia creeper, which we'll show you in just a few minutes, and also Boston ivy, because in the seedling stage and the juvenile growth, they look very much the same. But the poison ivy can easily be identified by just the little saying, if you remember it, leaves of three, leave me be. And you can see how the poison ivy comes out in a sort of an elongated uh, shape like this with the serrate, serrate, serrations on the leaves. It's a serrated leaf in uh, the leaves of three that's very, very typical and very common in the poison ivy to see it that way. So anytime you see a plant like this that has that particular shape, then you pretty well assure that it is poison ivy. And I would be very, very careful about the poison ivy and the way you handle it is, and I said really respect it because it is a plant that can cause you a lot of problems. Uh, in the landscape and because we've had so much rain this year I think we're going to have more of these undesirable plants coming up than we've ever had before. We're going to treat this poison ivy just like I did uh, the other uh, weed trees that I was trying to get rid of. I'm going to clip it off close to the ground. Notice it's coming out into another area over there. Clip all of it off even back in the back and also paint it with my Roundup. Now with poison ivy, you can just use a, a Roundup spray or you can get the poison ivy uh, killers uh, and sprays and spray those as well. <clears throat> but I, as I've said on the other, I really don't want to, to come in and uh, fix up an entire tank of spray just to control this poison ivy. So I'm just gonna paint it where I clipped it off. And I'm going to go on up and paint some toward the back. Actually, I clipped some of this off after I sprayed it the other day, but I'm going to paint it again. Come down and give this one another really good dose here on the end. And then come over and spray this one where I, where I cut it off 
as well. Now one more thing about the poison ivy. Remember that this poison ivy, just because you've clipped it off, means it does not mean that it doesn't cause you some real problems. So if with this one, I'm going to very carefully fold it up, put it in a plastic bag. I can get my plastic bag unfolded. Hopefully not touching my skin. Then I will tie this bag up. Oop. And then this is going to go into the trash. You can't even burn poison ivy. The smoke from the poison ivy will, uh, will get into your lungs and really cause some problems or get in, into, into, your, into your nostrils and your air passages. Be sure when you're checking your firewood or you're getting firewood that you don't have firewood that brings in poison ivy with it. It's really a problem for us in many parts of Oklahoma. So be aware of this in your landscape or in your neighbor's landscape because that's what has happened here. I have poison, I don't have the poison ivy. The poison ivy is in the sort of the unmanaged uh, wildscape area in the back here. And so that poison ivy has sort of crept over into mine. And so hopefully I, when I control mine, I will be controlling it over there as well. So be vigilant and check your areas for all those undesirable plant species in your ground covers. And while you're doing it, be sure and check for poison ivy coming up in your flower beds, in your shrub beds, and even around some of your, of your landscape trees in your landscape. Hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.